Good morning, everybody. This morning, it was still cool out, so I decided to make a a feeder for all the all the goats. They all like to compete, and so I'm not gonna add a feeder. I used an IBC tote. Didn't film any of it. I put it together in probably one hour from a full tote to all the modifications to dragging it out and setting it out there and getting ready to throw some hay in it. So I'll show you what's up. It's not your, uh, there's a bunch of other videos out there on IBC totes. I actually made the cuts wrong and I only have one tote. So I had to figure out a new way to make it work. So I just used some uh, cattle panel, hog panels, cut them down to size and did some grinding and because it is galvanized which you really don't want to be working with you don't want to be welding up so grind off that coating make sure you got some good ventilation <clears throat> and then just kind of tack weld around every part of the cattle panel and i use a piece of actual uh pipe steel pipe also See, I put a, uh, a rod down here, steel pipe that came from basically the fence that I had here. See, she wants some alfalfa already. And then um, they cut the bottom of the tote off. They do have these little corners that clip in, but I cut the bottom just to collect anything that falls. One side's a little bit wider than the other just because I used the other side has something for that pipe to go against. Let me see if I can focus right there. The side doesn't have that pipe, so I just kind of eyeballed it. And <clears throat> I did a little grind work on it to get this cut and, and uh, smoothed out so they don't cut themselves. Not the best welds, but they're gonna work. Um, and then I tack welded each top part here wherever I could get get a good bite. This little flux core harbor freight welder. Um, I duct taped the panel to that pipe just to get some tack welds on it. And there you go. Then there it's sturdy. This thing's pretty heavy. They're not gonna push it over. They can actually push that one over. So we'll add some flakes to it. Works really well. And these these guys are already in it. Good spot where I could throw some grain on the top over the top of this, and it'll just fall to the bottom, and they'll eat the stuff on the bottom. It's catching a lot more. It'll be a lot less waste. That's I'm using the phone right now, so it's whenever I do the forward camera. It, well, on my other phone, I don't know about this new phone. The uh, microphone doesn't work as well. But you guys can see. Can't zoom in on the selfie, but they can get in that bottom and eat up anything that falls down. There's a lot less waste. And with this one right here, you can see it falling down and it'll come right out of it. So you get a lot more waste with that one. And uh, <clears throat> also I can throw some grain on here if I ever need to kind of catch one of them. Um, they always come for grain. so. It's nice to come out sometimes you need to get one you just bring a bucket of grain they know what that is and you just grab them but you see how <laughs> some of them are inside it like this girl she's in it she don't care and um they she probably can't do it now but she was getting in there that other one that half barrel like that and what would happen is i went to work i came home she was in there who knows how long and uh when they're real little they get stuck and they can't get out so you don't want goats getting stuck especially when it gets really hot out and the sun's beating on them you see it works really well so far we'll see if these tack welds hold up um, i think they will i don't think they're going to be butting each other around as much just because there's a lot more area for them to to access and you can see that one right there she's sticking her whole head through the, the cattle panel um, 
but should be able to get out i hope we'll see if i, have to, if I ever have to make some modifications i'll be able to do it so we'll let it go for like a week see how this thing works and then i'll probably end up making another one for the other side and this is perfect for goats i should have did this a long time ago but in the summertime here it gets too hot i don't do anything um it still gets in like 90 right now and it's the end of october it'll be yeah it's halloween so this mornings the mornings are really nice but like right now the gnats are out already it's already getting warm the sun's out so um now the projects kick in again we can put a roof on our chicken coop we can uh make another feeder now looks like it's gonna work really well at least now for these little mom ones goat. i mean i call them mom goats because they they've already been moms and these ones are all pregnant so i'll feed these and all i have for them right now is just this little fire pit ring and um yeah it's called a fire ring and i'm going to show you why this is a bad thing to use for goats especially um she's like the leader here the queen and she'll basically push everybody away so until she gets full none of the other goats will really have access to it so building a nice size feeder probably a fence row feeder are probably the best ones the longer you can make it that way they don't have to be right close to each other and compete for the food but uh we'll see watch she's gonna push them all away You see, they already know they won't even. They won't even uh, try. But if this was longer, they'd all have some. Um, and they're well fed. It's just. They all, every every animal in the world has a pecking order. So, this is the way it works. Down to our last tom. You got one left. I uh, butchered two last night. I sold a couple the other day. I'm selling uh, I'm supposed to sell three more today. Well, the one butchered tom and two hens, or three hens. So, he's probably happy. No more fighting. See Bones over here. He's a. Uh, no more Bermuda grass, so we're streeting, or feeding straight alfalfa. I put that in there yesterday, full bell. And, uh, oops. they're eating it down. They like that alfalfa way better. That'll be good for today. But yeah, uh, he'll, he'll be going to the processor next month. Eating really well, grass fed. Um, I will be feeding them um, some grain this month. We've got a few bags we can throw She's coming in. over here, she wants some food. But, you know, <laughs> they got it. She's just gonna have to wait, I guess. They just won't, f they won't fight for it. They know their position. <clears throat> Are you trying to get crazy with this thing? Don't you know I'm loco? We had that, uh, we had a big, uh, yearling doling purebred that that was born last year um june july i think well she was breaking the fence gate town and trying to fight and mounting everybody and acting like a buck and looking like a buck but i guess it, it turns out she was a hermaphrodite so she was uh really no use for us besides a pet but we don't want a pet that's that aggressive. She's not aggressive to humans, but just to coop her up somewhere else where she couldn't be around anybody. She was harassing every other goat. So we took her in, in one of the weathers the other day to get processed. So they should be ready in next week, I guess. Um, it's just what you got to do. I kind of. I probably couldn't even have sold her. She was just, I don't think anybody would want a goat like that, breaking their fences down to to fight everybody. And she was mounting all the other little dolings and causing them distress and butting everybody around. So 
didn't want to do that um she broke that gate down twice that i have installed over here i put a t-post in it to brace it and what happens is i, don't, I just didn't want her in with these these pregnant does and then what happens is they can it's it's pretty they can get aggressive on their own as it is but they pretty much know their order in here and you just don't want them getting too rough with each other when they're pregnant especially this one wasn't she's a hermaphrodite but she was treating everything like she was a buck and you can cause abortions and all that um they'll butt the side of them and i just don't want to chance it um probably the reason why you take your buck out after so long we put ours in like 60 days and i know a lot of people do it for 45 and they, they pull their buck <clears throat> so they just you know they're probably not ill-willed and want to create abortions but that's just the way they are it's their behavior so we um uh, they're gonna be going in the freezer it's two goats and a, and a cow it should feed us for a while and uh the way it goes we're not a uh, we try to raise and sell and we don't buy any meat at the store haven't for years and we are happy for that the way the market is right now for from what we hear <clears throat> um we don't even look at meat at the store i mean it's just why we're not gonna buy it but what i from what i hear from others the sales, the sales for meat are just, the price tag on them is just ridiculous. <clears throat> so, yeah, we're, we're thankful for that. And prop butchering your own animals and all that's not the best part of this um, lifestyle. But some people will never understand it. And I don't, I'm not here to persuade anybody to do it or convince them that it's the best lifestyle. It's up to the individual. I don't really care what they think either um we do this for our own reasons and we could care less what anybody else thinks about it and we don't care if it hurts their feelings it's not our intentions are just to feed ourselves and and live this lifestyle we could care less what anybody else feels so that's just how we look at it if anybody wants to save an animal then come and buy one from us i guess we're still gonna have our freezers full and we still sell animals um you can buy them as a pet or you can buy them as meat that's what we do